this week we've got a we've got a fun topic. To be honest with you, uh, I really enjoy talking about WebSockets. One of the one of the cooler things that came out of um, a lot of, there was a lot of uh, changes that happened to the web in and around 2010. Uh, and WebSockets has to be one of the coolest things. So we're gonna take a look at them today. The notes have a great discussion on how to build a chat app, and they do it in Angular. But you know, it was interesting, this week I was talking with a number of students who were telling me that they've been doing so much Angular that they feel like they've forgotten React. And so what I thought I would do today is I would build something with WebSockets, do the server-side implementation and the front-end implementation, but I would do the front-end in React. And so you're gonna have the option of seeing it both ways. So the notes are really good. They have lots of good code on how to do this in Angular. And what we're gonna do is we'll supplement that and we'll do it in React. I'm also gonna build something a little bit uh, more ambitious than uh, this, this chat app. My goal is going to be to build a, an emoji app um, just for something different to try and show you sending data other than just you know pure text data okay so let's talk about these things what are we talking about when we talk about websockets so the idea behind websockets is that you have real time two way so this is really important two way or full duplex communication between a client and a server and it's great for things like gaming, collaborative apps, uh, chat systems, anything where you want to have like real presence between two endpoints or multiple endpoints. You want to have a whole bunch of people that are all, think about Microsoft Teams, think about Slack. Uh, I'll show you a bunch of examples as we get going in here. But I want you to think about it in comparison to what we've been doing so far. So, so far we've been doing a ton of HTTP request and response. And so think about how this works. You're in a browser and you wanna get data from a server. So we know how to do fetch and our communication is basically it's one way. So a client sends a request to a server. Servers receive requests. A server then processes the request, you know, give me this data, give me this page and the server sends back a response. Servers send responses, clients receive responses. And when they're done, they tear down the connection. So we request something and we receive something back and we're done. And the server at that point forgets about the client. It doesn't really know about the client. What it knows about is the request. So you're saying, give me this. The server says, all right, here you go. And then the transaction is completed. So there's, this is a great model. I mean, we build, you know, 95%, 98% of the web is built like this. It works really, really well. It scales well. There's lots of things that are really positive about it. But for certain applications, it has limitations. So one of the problems that we have is that because the server doesn't know about all of the clients who are out there, because the clients don't stay connected, and the server doesn't have a list of all of the clients, the servers can't, the server can't periodically update all of the clients with some information. So what if I wanted to broadcast out information to all of the clients? I really don't have a mechanism for doing that. Um, now there are ways that people get around this. So one thing that people will do is they will use polling. So polling is this concept where you, like imagine you write a loop and every five seconds, every 15 seconds, every five minutes you send a request and you make another request and another request and you just poll constantly over, you ask over and over and over again, do you have updates? Do you have updates? Do you have updates? And the server sends you those updates if you want. So, I mean, this works. You can have your clients just continually asking for updates, but as you can imagine, the interval when for your polling is gonna determine how frequently you get updated. So, for certain applications, this works well, but if I'm doing any anything that needs to feel quote unquote real time, where user A does something and user B does something, like think about a video game or something, like where I wanna have one player does something and it affects somebody else at the same time over the network. Polling is tricky because the timing is off. Now, if you reduce the polling window down to something really, really small, and you just constantly pound the server, it's gonna make it so that your server is eventually gonna get swamped. Like as you add more and more clients, 
uh, the server is going to be it's just going to be bombarded with these polling requests. And so, you know, when you think about something scaling, um, this gets tricky. Uh, so there's been other attempts to solve this. So, I mean, another attempt to solve this is this thing here. You don't you don't see a lot of people talking about it, but this is actually a really interesting technology too. So the web has this concept of server sent events. Server sent events allow a server to um, maintain a connection to a client, which is one way. So this is really important. Web sockets are gonna be two way. Server sent events are one way. So in this scenario, a client connects to a server and it opens up a channel between the server and the client, and then the server can send data whenever it has new data. So this approach can work really, really well for a lot of applications. So think about something like Twitter. Twitter is mostly, you know, give me updates. Every once in a while, I wanna send something. We already have a mechanism for that. That's like an HTTP post, right? You know how to post data up to a server. But if I wanna get updates in a social media app, as, as they come in, server sent events give me a, a nice model for doing this where I can open up a channel and the server can just sort of send updates down that channel whenever it has them. The server maintains a list of all the connected clients and we're starting to move towards something pretty interesting here for being able to have real time notifications from the server. So this is really good for notifications. Like if you're building an email application or something like that and you want to be able to like essentially stream data into the client from the server and the server is basically the source of truth and you want to you know send that send that data down uh, fairly frequently and you don't want to wait for the client to ask for it this puts the server in a position where it can take care of figuring out when things go so server send events are really interesting but they don't solve the collaboration problem so along come web sockets and web sockets, I just did a look here, are, are supported in 96% of all browsers in the world. So this is a technology that's been around for about 10, well, over 10 years now. <laughs> the web gets older and older. I remember when this stuff was just being uh, specced out. So web sockets are available everywhere. And web sockets can be written in any programming language. So you're going to hear, I mean, we're talking about web sockets and you Im immediately you think of browsers and HTML and JavaScript. And that's true. But you can also write web socket backends, the servers in anything in C++, in Python, in Rust, in Go, in Node.js. So it doesn't matter. The backend is uh, can be written in lots of things, just like a web server can be written in lots of things. So one of the most popular JavaScript libraries for building these things is called Socket.io. And it has, a, um, it has a server and a client API. So depending on which side you're building, and you're usually building both, you can use Socket.io on both ends. And it will take care of connecting the browser and the client, maintaining a channel, reconnecting if something gets disconnected, like if the network goes down or whatever, and then allowing you to send and receive messages in both directions. So you have this nice bi-directional uh, bi communication channel. So WebSockets work like HTTP, but they're a different protocol. So a WebSocket is it's happening over TCP IP, like you're doing, just like HTTP is a layer on top of TCP, WebSockets are a layer on top of TCP, but the communication channel is different. So what happens when you make, when you connect, um, like you can see code, uh, do they have the, no, they have the server code, but if eventually, well, I'll show you in a minute. But the, the point being, when I make a connection to a server, and I say, I want to start a WebSocket connection, an HTTP request is going to be made to the server. And if the server supports WebSocket connections, it will upgrade that to a WebSocket connection and send back an HTTP 101 response. You, you, I mean, there's, I don't think there's any other time that, that that ever comes up. Instead of a 200 or something like that, you get a 101. And 101 means you've been upgraded to a WebSocket, a persistent uh, full duplex channel between the two endpoints. So what's great about these web sockets is you can send any kind of data over them. So you can send tiny little messages, like if you wanted to keep track of the price of a stock and you're just sending numbers, you can send 
arrays. You can send any kind of JSON. So often we send JSON data over the wire. So that's any kind of JavaScript uh, that you want to send. You can also send binary data. So you have lots and lots of options for how you do this. And once we have a, a socket IO type setup or a WebSocket connection, what we're really doing is we're allowing client multiple clients to communicate through a server. So we have a hub and spoke architecture here where the server is the central point between all of these clients. So think about a game server or something like that or a chat server. So just so you're aware, there's another protocol that we're not going to be working on today, but is solving the same problem in a slightly different way, and that is WebRTC. WebRTC allows you to do peer-to-peer -peer connections. So instead of having to go through a server for all of this, it allows you to open up a peer connection and share uh, a data channel, which is really what a WebSocket is, as well as an audio and a video channel. So WebRTC is a topic for another day, but for today, we're going to be talking about uh, WebSockets. So what do they look like? Let me like, have you ever run into these things? You have. <laughs> you see them all the time. Let me show you a couple of examples that I've seen this week. So here is the Node.js project on GitHub. And what happens on GitHub is people push up commits to Git. So right now there are, what, 33,000 commits to Git, and each one of these commits represents a change to the code, you know, so they're doing, um, they're making a change. And so interestingly enough, here's a, a socket base change happening on Node. Now, the other thing I want you to notice is that when you go to something like Node, you can see there's this little yellow dot here. And if I click on it, it'll show me that there's a whole bunch of different builds being done right now. So for example, you can see that tests are being run on Mac OS. So what happens is, as somebody pushes their code up to GitHub, GitHub will then compile the code, run the tests, and it will report back and say this either worked or it didn't work. So what you're seeing here in the browser is sort of a common interface that we see in a lot of systems right now, and that is I have real-time build information. So somewhere on, the, on GitHub servers, they're building this code. And what they're doing is they're streaming that data back to me. How do I get this data? Well, they're using WebSockets, and we can prove that. So if I were to um, hop into the dev tools, and if I go to the network tab, and if I reload this page, I'll reload it, I get a whole bunch of different um, requests that are being made. And I don't know if you can notice this one here at the bottom. It says, um, that I have done, I've gotten a 101 response from GitHub and it says switching protocols. And then if I were to click, see up at the top here, I have HTML responses, CSS responses, whatever. But if I wanted to see WebSocket responses, I can click on WS and it'll show me the WebSocket responses. If I click on the WebSocket, you can see here you'll see all of this streaming data that's coming in. So as new data comes in, you'll see, now it's gonna stop. Let it sit for a second. So every time a new piece of data comes in, another line is gonna get added to this. And what the front end is doing, it's receiving that data and it's, it's updating the display. So the server and the client maintain a pipe that's open and then they just stream data across that pipe. Now in this case, all of the data is coming from the server. So sometimes people use WebSockets as a way of uh, being able to send live data up like this. So I told you server sent events also do this, but WebSockets can be used, you could just use one way of the two-way channel. And um, other times you're gonna see people do two-way. So let me show you an example of two-way. Here's another amazing app that a lot of people are in love with right now, Excelidraw. Excelidraw is written in React, and one of the cool features that it has, so the idea of Excelidraw is that you can draw these, um, you know, diagrams that look like you made them with a pencil. It's kind of like a really fast diagramming tool that people use, it's like a whiteboard tool. And one of the features that they added is they added this button here to do collaboration. So if I click on live collaboration, it says you can invite other people to the current scene to collaborate with you. That's cool. So I click on start session and it says, okay, here is a URL. Give this URL to other people who you want to connect with you. So what I'm gonna do, let me just change my view here. 
and I'm going to copy this and I'm going to make another page here like so. And what I want you to notice is, can you see on the right, in that browser on the right, the cursor on the left, whenever I move, it's moving it there. If I were to draw a circle over here, you'll see that a circle shows up there on the other side. And if I were to go over here, and if I were to draw a line and connect this to this, you'll see that it's happening over here. So I have bi-directional communication. These two browsers are not talking to each other. What they're doing is they're connecting to a server and then the server is responding back again. So let me prove it to you. Let's go into the dev tools, developer tools. Let's go to the network tab. Let me reload this page. And you'll see that my WebSocket connection, I've got a 101 to portal.excelladraw.com. So they have a WebSocket server that's listening. If I click here and I go to responses, you'll see that messages are being sent across. So if I go here and I start moving my mouse over here on the right, you'll see that messages are being sent to this browser over on the left. If I go to the one on the left and I start doing this, you'll see that I'm sending data out. And if I, I don't have two mice here, I can't do it at the same time. But if I had multiple people connecting, I would be able to connect as many of these as I want. So if I added um, another browser window to this, you'll see that up here in the corner, it says that three people have connected. So now I've got three people that are all connected inside of this app. And the data just streams in between all of these. So whatever updates I make to any of these, um, This is amazing, and there it is. So super, super, super powerful um, style of being able to build these real-time, highly collaborative uh, apps that just, they let you do such cool things. If you wanna build games, if you wanna build anything where the data needs to be really fresh, like you, you wanna be able to share data back and forth between people that are working on different systems, etc. This This stuff is awesome. Okay, so what I wanna do at this point is I want to, I wanna build something and I wanna take you through how all of this stuff works. So I wanna essentially have a chance uh, to build the backend pieces, the server pieces, and I also wanna build the, the front end. Uh, so step one, what I'll do in the rest of this video is I'll work on the back end. Okay, so I'm going to clean up some of my windows here. Get rid of this and uh, get rid of this. Leave page. And uh, let me switch views. And let's talk about building a simple server to do what we want. So. I have a number of apps that I've already started and I'm, I'm gonna be essentially filling out the code and working on them. So a little bit of this code has already been written. A bunch of the code that I've written so far, these are things that I think you know pretty well at this point. So for example, I wanna have an Express app. And so what I have is I have a little web server. The web server is gonna use cores. The reason I'm gonna use cores is because I wanna be able to have a web server and I wanna be able to write my React front end and host it on a separate server, and I wanna be able to connect across those different origins. Remember, an origin is the protocol, the domain name, and the port, all of that put together, HTTPS, whatever, port 7,500. 7, so I wanna be able to do cores across there, and I have a little app, and so my Express app currently looks like this. I just have a route that's gonna send back okay if you go to the, to the, uh, to the root. And I've got, my, I've got my app broken up into two files. So what's pretty typical with Express, and you've seen me do this in the past when writing test, is I will write my app, the app portion of my Express server in one file, and then I'll have another file, a server, and the server will pull in the app and it will set it up. Now I'm going to write my I'm going to write my server slightly differently than you have seen in the past and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in the HT, from the http module which is built into node I'm going to I'm going to grab the create server function 
and I'm gonna use that to create my server and then I'll tell my server to listen on port 5000. So we should be able to run this. If I go into my API and I start up this, I should be able to go to localhost 5000 and hit refresh and I get back okay, which is you know exactly what, exactly what I would expect to happen. So, so far, there's no magic here, okay? I want you to see that we have a regular web server and this is, this is a fundamental piece of what we need to do in order to be able to, uh, to build out a WebSocket server. You have to start with a web server because WebSocket connections begin as HTTP connections. Okay, so let's take this a little bit further. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the server and I'm gonna start adding some new things to this server. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to extend this so that it's also going to be a socket IO server. So I'm gonna require socket.io. Now I have already installed the modules that I want. I'll post all of this code when I'm done, but like I've already installed socket.io as an example, okay? So when I'm using this, I'm not gonna waste time installing it. You know how to install things at this point. That's where it's coming from. So I have socket IO, I have that server. So what I'm gonna do after I create my HTTP server is I'm also going to attach or wrap this server with a socket server. And the way that I do this is step one, I'm going to create some options for this server. So the only thing I need to worry about here is I need to worry about cores. So I'm gonna have, uh, I'm gonna allow, this is, I'm just gonna open it up. I'll let any origin connect using uh, get requests, like so. And I'm going to create a WebSocket server, and this is going to be a new server, which takes as its first argument our HTTP server, which we've already created, and it also takes these uh, server options, like so. And that's, I mean, socket IO is amazing because I don't have to write a ton of code. That's enough to get us going with the ability to create socket connections. So the last thing that I need to do is I need to tell it what to do when a new connection comes in. So I take this server, this web socket server, and the, the socket IO, well, web sockets in general and socket IO in particular here, they're all written using the event emitter uh, design pattern. So you're going to register listeners for events or subscribe to events in the language of Angular, and you're then gonna be able to act on those calling functions with a listener function. So for example, for my um, socket server, whenever there's a connection, I'm going to be handed a socket. So it's gonna call the following function like this. It's gonna call the following function and I can do something with that socket. So um, as a really simple example, let's just console.log the socket like this. Okay, so to begin with, I'm not gonna do anything with it. So I'll save that and I should be able to run run this server. So I have a server that's sitting here listening and it's waiting for a WebSocket connection to come in. So I have also written another little, another little uh, front end just to let us see how the WebSocket would work. So I have a web page here and in this web page, I'm pulling in the socket IO client library. So remember I said that Socket.io has a server API, which I'm using in Node, and it also has a client API, which you're gonna use in the browser. And so you can work with it in uh, both, you work in both ends, and the, the API is similar but not identical. So the server side has to do more work because it has to manage lots of different connections. So to begin with, I'm not doing anything with Angular, I'm not doing anything with React, this is 100% just, you know, in the browser, I'm going to use Socket.io on both sides. You don't actually have to use Socket.io. If you wanted to, you can create, 
you know, like it is possible for you to say, you know, window dot web socket. There, the web a web socket constructor lives in the global uh, object in your browser. You can just use that. But socket IO adds a bunch of convenience for me and makes it so I don't have to write quite so much code. All right, so take a look at what this code is doing. The first thing that it does is it tries to connect to localhost 5000. So localhost 5000 is this server that I have running over here, and it's gonna try and make a connection. And so it takes care of making the HTTP request and then upgrading that request so that uh, it can be turned into a, a WebSocket connection. And when the socket has been fully connected, it's going to call this socket.onConnect and it's gonna tell me that this thing has connected. All right, so let's, let's just try this out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start up this uh, web page here in another terminal. So I'm gonna go into my debug, uh, what have I got? Uh, package.json. Let me write a start. Let me just write a script to run a web server. Okay, so I've got a I've got something running on localhost 8081. So this is running over here. You can see that my web server has spit out the socket. Okay, so let's just review for a second. My server, whenever there's a connection, is going to console.log the socket object that gets handed back to it. Okay, so you can see that this just happened here. So what I'll do is, just to show you, I'll, I'll open up a bunch more. Uh, let's put this here and let's move this over here. So if I, let me just clear the screen. If I connect, watch on the left, I go here you see that another socket connection was, was added. So we've got the, the mechanism is working, like, you know, five minutes of code, you know, five lines of code on the server, a couple lines of code on the client. We now have a full duplex connection between those two endpoints, and we can start talking. We can start talking between the two sides. Okay, so let's, let's go a bit further. So obviously we're not gonna do this. We're not gonna log, um, you know, this is the socket that just connected. Instead, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take that socket, which represents the, the, the connection with the client, and I'd like to do something with it. So um, I'm gonna throw this code in another file. And so what I'm gonna do is, uh, just to keep it so that it's, this file is a bit smaller, I'm gonna pull in a function called add client and I'm gonna require a file called socket client, which I haven't written yet. But the idea is that whenever a socket connects, I'm going to add a client, if I could type, I can't type, add a client, like so. So this is what my, this is the basic flow of my server. All right, so let's add this file. So I need a new file called socket client.js and the idea behind socket client is that I want to essentially uh, add client is equal to a function which receives a socket and it's going to do something with the socket okay so the easiest thing we could do is we could say uh, console.log and we could say socket connected and if we wanted to, it might be interesting for us to keep track of how many sockets there are connected at, at any given time. So I could say, for example, let clients is equal to zero. So there are no clients connected. Every time that a client connects, I'm gonna say clients plus plus, and I'm going to print out the number of clients that have connected like so. Okay, so this should work if we uh, run it now. Whoops, require Z is not defined, no doubt. So we go back here and we do this. And you can see already it said that two clients have connected. 
How is that possible? Well, what's really cool about what happens with Socket.io is Socket.io will try to reconnect. So if the server goes down or the browser, um, the page gets refreshed, or um, if network goes out for a little bit, what it'll do is it will try and reconnect whenever it can again. And you can see that I now have two browsers connected. And if I were to refresh this page, you'll see that it goes up again. I have, I have three connections now, right? Okay, so the reason I have three is because I'm not saying what happens when a, when a client disconnects. So I need to know when a client disconnects. So the way that I do that is I say, I take the socket object and I add in on disconnect. So whenever you want to, whenever you want to, you want to know if the client did something, sent you a message, disconnected, there was an error, you're going to listen for an event that gets emitted. And so when, the, when these uh, clients disconnect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a function. So I'm going to say clients minus minus console.log socket disconnected and I'll print out the number of clients like so. And the other thing that I'll do is I will just clean up all of the event listeners. So one of the things that you'll notice is because I'm attaching event handlers to this socket, JavaScript can't really clean this up easily. Like the socket, the, there are op like the garbage collector won't be able to reclaim this socket because we're going to be holding on to uh, we're going to be holding on to references to inside the object. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say take the socket and turn off any of the listeners, any of the listeners that are still attached. Just get rid of them. Okay. So let's try this now. Let's Let's kill this and rerun it again. So it starts up, I should get a couple of clients connecting, which I do. If I refresh this page, if I hit refresh, you'll see that I got one disconnect and then two connected. And if I were to make a new browser window, you'll see that I have three connected. And if I close this, I have two connected. So I have awareness of how many of these uh, how many of these things are connected at a given time? Okay, so let's do this. Let's, let's add some more to what this thing can do. So let's add the ability for uh, when a client connects, I want to send it a bunch of information about the current state of the world. So the server is the source of truth about you know, what's going on inside of, inside of the app. And what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to tell a client when it connects, um, here's some information you need to know. So how do I do this? Well, we know how to listen for events on the socket. How do we go the other way? How do we send data out? So what I do in this case with an event emitter is I emit data. So I would take the socket and I would emit data to the socket and I, t I pass it two things. Number one, I pass it the name of an event. So this can be anything you want. So let's say I have an event called init, initialize. And initialize, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it a bunch of data. So for example, I could pass a JavaScript object and I could say that the number of, I could pass in the number of clients that are currently connected like so. Okay, so look at what this code does now. A socket connects, we add one to the list of uh, socket connections. We log that information on the terminal. We set up an event listener for this disconnect event, so we know that it's done. And then we immediately send a message to just this one client and we say, okay, um, this, this is how many clients are currently connected. There are three that are connected, okay? So if I, let's make a change over here to this code. So let me get rid of some of this. Um, so let's say socket on, init when the init event is received from the server side I want to call this function and what I'd like to do is I would like to console.log init 
and log out the data. So I'm gonna just pop open the console here so we can see what's going on. Okay, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna restart my web server. And I'll refresh the page. Uh, I didn't save my file. Okay, so now you can see something interesting has happened here. You can see that when my connection was made, I received the init event and it said, okay, there, there, this is the number of clients that are connected. There's one client connected right now. So it sent, it sent this information through. I'm the only client that is connected. So that's pretty interesting. So now I have the ability. So if I open up another one of these and I uh, go here and I take a look at the console, you'll see that there's now three clients that have connected. So when this thing connected, there are three. Now, if you take a look back at uh, this one, not this one, not this one. Sorry, I've got too many. Uh, let's do a new tab. Three, no. What am I running on? 8081. If I look here, inspect element, you should see that four are connected. They are, four are connected. And this one says three are connected. So we have a new problem, which is we have lots of clients connecting, and when they connect, we send them a message and we know, okay, this, this is looking good. We know exactly how many people are connected, but we now need a way to update everybody. When somebody new joins or somebody new disconnects, we need to send a message and say, there's been an update, okay? So let's say as an example, instead of sending a message to just one of the clients that's connected to us right now, what I'd like to be able to do is I'd like to be able to send, I'd like to be able to send a message to all of the other ones. So I'd like to be able to broadcast a message out to everybody and say, this is, this is the message that I wanna send you. So we can easily do that. So if we wanted to broadcast something out, the way you do it is you say, you take the socket and you say, I want to broadcast, socket.broadcast, and I want to emit what? I want to emit, let's say count. So I have an event called count, and what count is going to do is it's going to send the number of clients, like so broadcast it out. Now the way that this will work, it will only send it to everybody except this socket. So this socket, I'm gonna, it's like if, I, if I'm sending something, if I wanted to send it to all of them, I would have to uh, do it slightly differently. But in this case, I'm gonna send it to everybody but this one. So let's modify our web page a little bit. Let's change this so that when we receive in the browser on count, Uh, console.log um, count and data. Okay, and so we'll restart our server and restart this web page here. And let's refresh this page so another one connects. And again, I didn't save my file. <laughs> uh, Okay, so there we go. You can see these count messages are coming in. I'm getting a new count message every time somebody connects, which is great. So really what I need to do is I also need to do the same thing every time somebody disconnects. So when somebody disconnects, I also need to send the count. Again, I need to restart my server. And if I refresh this, you'll see that the count changes. If I go here and I close this window, I get a count update over here. It was four, but now it's three. So using this technique, I can maintain some sort of global state. So if you're building a video game, that might be the state of the game, like a chessboard. It might be the, the location of all the pieces, the score, the time, that sort of stuff. If you're building a chat app, 
It might be all of the people that are currently connected. It might be the recent messages that have been coming in so that when a client connects, you can give them access to this information uh, so that they can decide to do something with it. Okay, so we have a lot of the pieces in place that we need now. And what I want to do is I want to I want to I want to add some some code to this to make it um, into our chat app. So I have a couple of goals with this, the way this is going to work. Every time somebody connects to this chat server, I want to assign them a name. I'm going to give everybody a unique name. And so we have to generate a name for each person. And I also want to keep track of the recent messages that have come in. So I want to remember, let's say the last 50 messages or I want to remember um, everything that's you know happened up to an hour ago. Like I want to sort of have like a a degrading cache where it only hangs on to the most recent things. So it's not going to retain things forever. So if a client connects, they'll be able to see who's connected and what they're saying, and they'll be able to join in on the chat. So to do this, we have to do a couple of things. So I have a number of packages that I've installed that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this thing called Unique Name Generator. And I'll just give a really quick tour of these. NPM Unique Name Generator. This is a really cool module that, you know, if you need unique names, essentially what it has is it has a bunch of dictionaries. So numbers, adjectives, animals, colors. So I'm going to use colors and animals. So I'm going to give everybody a name like you know, red panda or blue whale or something like that. It's going to take an adjective and a it's you basically tell it which dictionaries to use and then it generates a unique name for you. And the unique name that you get back um, is going to be, you know, it's going to give you back. It's going to give you back something typically with an underscore. You can change the separator that you get back and so on. So I want to use this. And I'm also going to use an NPM module called title case to convert that into title case. And the last one I'm going to use is I'm going to use an LRU cache. And if you haven't heard of LRU caches before, an LRU cache, what it does is it deletes the least recently used items. So least recently used cache. And what it lets me do is it's kind of like an array or a, an, it's an object where I can store data and I can say, I only want to ever have a maximum of say 500 items. And I only want these things to live for say an hour, something like that. So you can set a maximum age and you can set a maximum number of items that you want to have in there. Okay, so let's write a little bit of code here. So the first thing I need to do is I have to give everybody a unique name. So I'm going to make another module. Uh, let's call this uh, random name, new file. random name.js. And I'm going to pull in um, this unique names generator, pull in the colors dictionary and the animals dictionary uh, unique name generator. And I'm going to pull in the title case function. Nope. Title case. And let's see, I want to basically expose one function. So module.exports is equal to a function. And what this function does is it generates a random name, which is going to be the unique names generator. And I'm going to say the Pass in the dictionaries are going to be colors and animals, like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to return the title case version of this. So for example, this thing is going to give me a name like Red Panda. And what I'd like to do is I would like to return Red 
panda like that. I just want to change the way it looks. So I'm going to take the random name. I'm going to replace uh, the underscores with spaces, convert it to title case, and return it. So I have a little function for being able to get a random name. And so it looks like if I go to node and I say, um, require um, random name, whoops, require is not a function. Const random name is equal to require random, I have to save this, random name, random name. Oh, why is everything so hard? Node, random name, there we go. Random name, random name, scarlet wren, apricot jellyfish, silver, etc. So I can create tons and tons of different random names, red penguin. So everybody can have some unique name in this chat app. We're gonna, I'm just wanting it to be fun. I'm not gonna use real names. Okay, so I have a random name. The second thing I wanna do is I wanna make a cache file for this LRU cache. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in the LRU module cache and I'm going to I'm going to make a cache. It's going to be equal to a new LRU and I'm going to say that I want to have a maximum of 50 items in here and the and the longest I want any of these items to remain is 1000 times 60 times 60 or 1 hour. And sometimes what you'll see people will often do this. They'll say const one hour is equal to this and they'll say max age one hour it just has a way to kind of document uh, document what they're doing so we make our cache and we're going to expose module.exports we're going to add a message to the cache and we're going to take the person's uh, is equal to a function we'll take the person's name and we'll take the emojis that they give us and I'll talk more about this in a second. So I'm going to, the way that this cache works is you set an object in the cache. So you have to set an object and you have to give it a key and a value. And I'm not really gonna have a key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make one up. So I'm gonna say ID is equal to one and I will um, cache and I will just use ID plus plus. So I'm gonna put in an object with the name and the emojis inside here. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll say module.exports.messages is equal to a function, which is gonna return cache.values. So essentially what I wanna be able to do is I wanna be able to add something to the cache. I want things that go into the cache to only live there for a certain amount of time. So this is like a fancy array in memory which will evict items after a certain period, after there's too many items, or after a certain period of time, which is what we want. I'm gonna put the data in here, the person's name and the list of emojis that they typed, and then I have a way to get everything back out again so that I can, uh, so I can work with it. Okay, given all that, we can finish up this socket client. So let's do the following. Let's pull in our random name function and let's pull in from our cache the add message and messages functions from the cache okay so when a new client gets added we receive the socket and the very first thing that I'm going to do is I'll add one to the number of clients and the second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a name for them so I'm gonna give them a name and I'm gonna say the socket, you know, socket connected. These are the number of clients and this is the name of the individual who just connected. When they disconnect, I'm gonna say that the number goes down 
and I'm gonna say a socket disconnected. This is the new number of clients, and this is the name of the client who, uh, who just disconnected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna emit the count out to everybody. I'm just gonna send the actual number of clients. I'm not gonna wrap it in an object because I don't need to. So I'll say this is the number of clients who are still connected whenever that happens. When a client connects, I'm also gonna initialize some data. I'm gonna send them some data. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell them what their name is. So this is your name. I'm gonna tell them the number of clients that are currently connected. And I'm also gonna pass them all of the messages that are in the cache. So I want to be, I want to be able to share with the remote side here's the state of everything that's happening in the server. So if other people have sent messages, we're building a, an emoji based chat app, other people have sent in these emojis, we've cached them and I wanna be able to send them back to you so that you can display them in the browser whenever they get them. So this is what we're gonna do when we start up. And I wanna be able to broadcast to everybody else that the count has changed and these are the number of clients that uh, are, these are the number of clients that are connected. Okay, one last thing we have to do. I wanna be able to receive a message from each client. So a client is going to tap out a number of emojis and they're gonna send those emojis to the server and then I want the server to broadcast them out to everybody else who's connected. The same way that Exceladraw was broadcasting out all of the positions of the mouse and all of the things that you drew, uh, were drawing on the screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write another event, socket.on message. So when I receive a message from a client, the client is going to send me an object, a data object. And inside that data object, there's going to be two things. There's going, so I'm gonna console.log message, and I'm gonna print out the data that's in there. So the data that's in there is there's going to be a name, so who said it, and there's also going to be data.emojis. These are the emojis that they sent. And so a lot of times people, you'll see me not doing this. Instead, what I'll do is I'll just define name and emojis here, and then I don't have to use data elsewhere. So I can just write it like this. Same way of writing it, but pretty common to write it in this new format where I am defining what the object looks like here. So I console.log this. I'm going to add this to my cache. So every time a message comes in, I'm gonna add the message to the cache. Name and emojis goes into the cache. And the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send it to everybody else. So I'm gonna send it to everybody else except this socket because this socket sent it. It doesn't need it, it already knows the data. So I'm gonna say socket broadcast emit. I'm going to emit a message event from the server, and the message event from the server is gonna contain the same data, the name and the emojis that were just sent to me. And I think that's it. I think that's, I think that's enough for our server. Um, you know, 20, less than 30 lines of code we, you know, we can obviously add a lot more. We could, there's way more we could do, but I don't want to have it get any more complicated than this. I want to just a quick review before we pause and do the front end. I want to make a express server, start up an HTTP server that uses that express app. I want to define a WebSocket server, and I want to attach it to this HTTP server. So they're, they're, you're gonna have two servers running basically. Whenever a new connection comes in on the socket server, I'm gonna receive the WebSocket, and I'm gonna pass it into my function so that I can add this client. So over here, I have the add client function. It receives the socket. I'm gonna keep track of how many clients are connected. I'm gonna give every client a name, and I'm gonna listen for the client disconnecting and also the client sending me messages. And when they first connect, 
I'm going to tell them the state of the world, the state of the world, how many people are connected, what are all the current messages, and I'm going to tell everybody else that there's been an update to the count. Okay, so we have a pretty basic uh, API here. I'm going to save this. My cache file is not saved. I'm going to save this. And we should be able to we should be able to build out the React front end. So I'm going to pause here. And in the next video, I'm going to build the front end to connect into this.